Hello everyone, welcome to the Smell of Metal channel. Basically, a few months ago I got into watchmaking. It was um, something that I was preparing for, for another few months. So basically I was still in the military. Every free moment I had, I was like browsing the internet, seeing what I have to get, what I have to do, figuring out ways to start. So um, eventually I realized I'll just buy some tools. Also, shout out to No BS Watchmaker, who has a great article about this called How to Get Into Watchmaking. And um, he inspired me to get the tools that I eventually did. So let's get started. I'll show you the five tools that you need to start with watchmaking. Let's go. Yeah, so here it is, basically. I'll just get to it one at a time. Well, first of all, you're going to need a movement, right? So in order to have something to work on, I suggest that uh, the first movement that you get is the ETA 6498. It's quite large and uh, is a pleasure to work with. It costs about $45 for the uh, copy. So if you start, you can buy one or two. Basically, I would buy two because I already broke a few parts of this. So when I went to eBay to get replacement parts, I realized that the parts along with the shipping cost the same amount as this movement. So if you're getting started, you might consider getting two. This one here is a e copy of ETA 2824. And um, this one is cheaper. However, it's more complicated. It has a date wheel along with a weight, an oscillating weight. So it's, uh, it's tinier and it's also more complex. This arrived just today, so I still have the pleasure to start fiddling with this after I finish this video. Okay, so the tools, five tools that you need to start with watchmaking. First of all, you're going to need a, what, a movement holder. So um, the movement holder basically is something that you're going to be using a lot. Um, this one here is a Bergeon 4040P and um, it's really of high quality. You can really tell that it's Swiss made by the sharp plastic corners and nice finish on the metal. It's really sturdy and a pleasure to work with. It can fit the... 6498 and it can also fit the 2824. It has a larger compartment here and here you see there's a smaller one as well. When you first attach the movement you want to avoid something that I almost did. Basically that's um, that's voiding closing the movement on the corner where there is the escape wheel. I almost bent it and uh, it would have made my joy very short-lived. So when you close the movement holder, make sure that you actually close it so that uh, it's on an angle where nothing is really getting damaged. Yeah, like this. All right, so next up, we have the bread and butter of every wedge making every watchmaker and uh, that is the tweezers this is a three dollar pair of tweezers from slinger.com but if i was to order again i'm definitely going to order the 30 dollar dumont ones why because one side is thinner than the other and when you're picking up minuscule items or screws or whatever it it really makes a difference as i said it's a as I always like to say, it's actually, you have to be rich to buy cheap things because if you get, get something cheap, like these screwdrivers here, you eventually want to get them replaced and it will render these ones useless, really. This is also a cheap set of screwdrivers, cost me $5. And um, the blade here is a little bit rough, you know. It, it doesn't really scratch the screws as far as I've noticed, but uh, you can still tell that it's, uh, it's a little bit gnarly to work with. And this set is from 0 0.8 to 1.4 millimeters in, uh, in diameter. 
I found myself using the 1.4 the most, but I did need the 0 0.8 for the tiniest screws near the escapement. All right. And uh, next up, we have the loop. Also very important. Basically, you need this to see what you're doing, where you're doing it and how you're doing it. Mm, the loop is essential and you will also need the loop holder because the chances that you popping this in your eye socket and it's staying there are quite slim. This is a four times magnifying loop and uh, the number on the loop indicates how close the item that you're viewing with it should be to the lens. And last up, uh, what I find very useful is the tray uh, with the uh, compartments and the uh, dust cover. So if you're opening up a movement, you can use one of the compartments for one type of parts. So you put one, one um, section of parts into one section and another section of parts to another and so on. It helps you keep things more organized and you can also use the dust cover for when you work on the movement then you want to go eat walk your dog watch some videos or whatever you do and you can just put it here and put the dust cover over it so it helps to keep it sanitized that's pretty much it. These are the five tools you need to get started with wedge making and realize if it's good for you or not. Basically, I did the calculations and um, if you're going for the decent package, decent quality for everything, along with the movement, you're going to spend $200 or less. If you're going for the budget option, basically the cheapest of everything and also the cheap movement, uh, you're going to spend $60 or less. And uh, this is a copy movement of uh, 2824, as I said. And uh, this cost about, um, what was it, $35. And uh, the 6498 cost me about $45. It's funny because this uh, cheaper movement is actually more complicated and smaller, harder to work with, etc. But uh, that's the way it is. So hopefully this uh, is some good information for you. And uh, if you get the movement, don't forget to get the hands as well, because it's a nice pleasure to actually see that uh, when you disassembled and reassembled the movement, it actually works. That's about it from me. And uh, until next time, checking out Smell of Metal, nice and steady. Bye bye.